Hi everybody, Trisha Keel, Tomorrow's Key, here with um, preparations for you for the summer solstice. Today is about a week away from the uh, longest day of the year. We have been experiencing the days getting a little bit longer and a little bit longer ever since the first day of winter, if you will recall back about Christmas time when the days expanded so that there was enough time in January, enough time with daylight so that you didn't feel like you were starving to death for the light. Now we have so much light that we are filled up and our, our bodies and our world is just celebrating with all the, the sunshine and the effects of the sunshine and all the, the plants are growing and, and the, the fruit and vegetables are, are coming into the grocery stores in, in bushel loads and we're benefiting from how the plants have turned the sunshine into the bounty of the earth. So as our days get a little bit longer and a little bit longer up until the 20th, um, for most people in the world, um, in the North American continent, it will the solstice will be on June 20th. Um, between now and then, you want to prepare yourself to celebrate the fullness of the light um, because this is this this is a big show. This is this is as good as it gets for Mother Nature. This is when the goddess of spring becomes the, the, the maiden changes into the mother and, and the babies are born. And, and in fact, I had both my children in, in June, June 1st and June 13th. Happy birthday to Elizabeth, uh, because today is June 13th. Um, this is when um, the energy shifts over from being... Um, rising up to being at full up and and here we are at 12 o'clock high in the wheel of the year this is the the biggest part of the sun and the feast of the sun king is coming so what you want to do is have some sort of a fire celebration now depending upon what your living arrangements are this may be a barbecue in the backyard this may be a bonfire on the beach this may be Acres of candles set around your gardens. This may be acres of candles set around your house. It may be a candlelit journey to the hot tub or, or uh, if whatever bathtub you've got, uh, just surround it with candles and, and crack open a bottle of the bubbly and celebrate the grape harvest. Uh, it's going to be exactly what you make it. So um, later on in July, we'll have the, the big 4th of July explosions in the sky, which is all a part of the same celebration of fire. But you want to have a little bit of fireworks in your own life. So turn up the, the romance and, and turn up the heat and turn up the passion and feel the power of the sun and, and the big old um, moon that's... That, uh, Oh, up there very brightly in the sky opposite the full sun. Um, we have got the completion of the moon of disenchantment at this point in time, and I hope you have been weeding your gardens. We're working up to the new moon on the 19th uh, in the oak moon, which is all about security and strong foundations and connecting to your own power, reestablishing your own power, coming into your own, as every woman does, when she realizes just how very powerful she really is. So um, all those seed thoughts that you planted at the winter equinox, all the things that you wrote out, this is, where, this is what I want to do in, in this year, and this is what I want to be celebrating at the end of next year, uh, you should be halfway there by now. Pull out those um, resolutions that you wrote and look at where you are and decide whether or not you want to keep that goal, that, that seed that you planted, or you want to yank it out because now it's a weed and it no longer serves you. And that can be uh, a project, that can be a thought that maybe no longer serves you, and that can also be a relationship with a person that is uh, taking away your energy so you can't spend those energies on what it is you do want to grow. So before the 19th, you need to be finished with your weeding of your garden and getting ready for the oak moon, the true wood of, the, of all of the trees of the forest. This is the strongest, most powerful moon. Um, get yourself an acorn between now and then so you'll have it ready. Um, 
to clear the energies that you've got, that you've been building up since the spring equinox. You will want to, once again, get a really nice bowl, crystal, pottery, doesn't matter as long as it's made out of earth and it has some meaning to you, and put all your crystal jewelry, all your diamonds, emeralds, rubies, not opals, um, not amber, not malachite. I had a it didn't work for Malachite, but all your crystalline jewelry um, and crystals that you have around your house. Like I have a crystal hanging right back here um, and have crystals in my windows and have crystals all over everywhere. I will put them all in a bowl and I will sprinkle them with my sea salt and I will sprinkle them with salt water so that they're covered in the water and sprinkled with the salt. And then I will place them outside for a day of sunlight and a night of starlight and moonlight and, and then the next day bring them in and wash them all off and put them all back where they go. Now do not place your very best jewelry out in the front yard where someone can steal it. You want to always take care to protect your stuff and if you don't have a private secluded area outside then set it next to the window um, where it will get the most light. Um, at this time of the year here in Houston the most light will come from your south windows because yeah, because the sun is south. All right, I'm, I'm saying the sun is south, but I'm thinking that the sun is north because, because it, that's what summer is when we're tilted towards the north. Okay, anyway, figure out a window whichever you get the most light in and uh, place it inside the house then, but give it as much opportunity to have starlight and sunlight and moonlight. You'll have to leave the curtains open or the blinds drawn. Um, and uh, just the next day, wash them off, put them all back where they go, and, and you're good to go. If you have um, uh, clutter, that is clear is clogging up your desk and clogging up your entrance and clogging up the heart of your house. It's time to clear it again. Once again, um, stuff gathers. Look in the corners, pull your furniture out, sweep all the little crispy critters out from behind there and gather up the tumbleweeds of hairballs and, and, and ease your flow for the, the second half of the year. Um, you might want to start saving money for the holidays. Uh, project how far you've got before it's time to start buying gifts. And you, you're going to want to buy gifts earlier this year. You're not going to want to buy gifts in November. So between August 18th, 19th up to Halloween is when you want to do your Christmas shopping. Or you're going to have to wait for the first couple of weeks of December. Um, don't shop in November. It's a wash. If you do, save all your receipts <laughs> religiously. Um, next, let's talk about washing your windows because this is this time of fire in feng shui uh, correlates directly to your vision. You want to wash all your windows inside and out. You want to um, clean all your mirrors. You want to get your eyes checked if you haven't. Maybe get your bangs trimmed. Uh, so that you can see the world and the world can see you. If you're, if you have a front yard that has a bunch of bushes in it, you want to bring the bushes down to four feet tall, no taller, and you want to lift the tree canopy up to eight feet off the ground so you can see what's coming at you through space and time. Um, you want to wear gold to celebrate the golden light of the sun. The silver and platinum and white gold go more for the moon, but for the, the solstice, on the 20th, be sure to wear gold to, to honor the sun. Um, eat outside, bring all your friends together, and celebrate the, the love and the light of the summer solstice. This is Trisha Keel, Tomorrow's Key. Happy summer, everybody.